So I'm gonna, this is the weird, some of the weird information in human design. This is what Ra used to call the gray matter. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through it because I think it's an interesting thing to understand. And I think it's interesting, particularly as we get more and more scientific insights into things like ancestral lineage and memory and how it all works. I think there's still more gray than there is black or white. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of things I think to contemplate. So the black part on the right side of the chart is the personality part. It's actually the design of your soul curriculum. Okay. So it's where your soul purpose lives. That's what we've been talking about in level four. If you're in level four, the red part of the chart, the unconscious is the design part. The design part if you're familiar with Rupert Sheldrake's work, are you familiar with Rupert Sheldrake's work and morphogenetic fields? Okay, this is like back in the day when I used to talk about chakras and everybody was like, what's a chakra? What's a chakra, <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't remember those days, right? Um, so, okay, Rupert Sheldrake is, was, is a, he titles himself to be an evolutionary biologist. He started off doing work um, and you may be interested to read his book. Um, uh, he researched dogs that knew their owners were coming home before their owners got home. And it wasn't just on a schedule, right? Because dogs are kind of patterned. But they have a lot of logical circuit maybe, but dog can sense when their people are coming. And his theory was that there is a field of information on a quantum, and now we know not just on a photon level, but on a tachyon level. Tachyons are uh, quantum particles that move faster than light. And if you've ever heard of zero point technology, zero point technology is tachyons. So Rupert Sheldrake hypothesized that animals can sense shifts and changes in the field and they can sense and feel intention, right? So he took that theory a little bit further and said, evolution doesn't make sense in the way that we teach it from this materialistic perspective that Darwin has. That actually evolution maybe is more deliberate than we think. And that the morphogenetic fields for the next phase of evolution in a species happens. And then the bodies, the genetic lineage adapt to what's necessary to fulfill the morphogenetic field. So basically he's saying evolution is probably a little bit more conscious and deliberate than we think, which starts a whole mess of evolution. So I'm not going to go, but I am going to say that if we look at the design crystal, so when you are conceived eight hours before your parents get together physically, your father's energy field, this is all according to Ra, your father's, uh, your father's energy field calls forth what's called the design crystal. The design crystal lives in the earth. It's a crystalline code of information. When you're conceived, your father's energy calls forth this design crystal. It's bundled with the magnetic monopole, which is the, the resonance field that ends up taking up residency in the heart. That design crystal is actually a template, a morphogenetic template. So how many, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm getting out of science brain, trying to get into plain speak brain. In embryology, embryologists don't know how we go from sperm cell, egg cell, and then a unified cell called a blastocyst into, you know, a clump of cells and eventually into a differentiated body parts. We still don't know the biology of this. The design crystal kind of explains it because the design crystal contains the code for your body. The way Ra used to teach it is literally the design crystal chooses which sperm meets the egg. There's one egg, there's all these different sperm. The design crystal is saying, okay, that one, I need this genetic material and, and this genetic material is gonna create the baby. And the process of the baby going from a clump of cells to becoming an individual with body parts and, and personality and all of that is actually engineered by the design crystal. That design crystal contains your ancestral lineage on a genetic level. It chooses those ancestral, those ancestral lineage. It's the epigenes, it's the ancestral coding. It's also the part of the chart, if you will, that has ha that's sort of the human avatar part of your chart. 
So your soul drops in and connects with this design crystal. So the personality crystal and the design crystal come together and create this unified being that's basically the vehicle is what Ra used to call it, the vehicle that your soul is living in. So if you're having past life memories, it can be something that happened to your design crystal before you're wearing it. It also can be something that's encoded in your ancestral lineage. And you want to, the, the birth process and the death process is really important because if you don't allow the time necessary for the personality crystal to disengage from the body and go back to the earth at death, which is why Ra used to teach, the body has to sit for three days and it needs to not be embalmed. You don't need to, you shouldn't, what do you call it? Cremate it too quickly. No it, autopsies. Thank no. you. No autopsies. It needs time to go back to the earth, into the earth. So um, let's just say the universe is mysterious and that you having these experiences is either one of these two things that you you are carrying the story. I would think that I would say that you're carrying the story and remembering the story for a very important reason, that you are basically a steward for this story. And it's that story, that, that motif of that story or the miasm that is that story is part of your, your personal storyline because you're here to clear it and heal it in all directions of time. 